In this recipe, I'm going to show you how to connect a switch to a Raspberry Pi so that when you press it, you can uh, see the effect on your computer. Okay, so here's the little type, the switch we're going to use. It's a little, they're called tactile push switches, and they're great for using with breadboard because they just have four little pins like that, and they will fit in across the central divide between the two halves of the breadboard like that. You need to um, push them in quite firmly because sometimes they kind of just sit on the top and not make a good contact. The other connections we need to make are just to wire this switch up to the Raspberry Pi. One important point before you do this is that you make sure that the Raspberry Pi has either been rebooted, well just make sure it's been rebooted is probably the safest way, um, because if the pin was last used as an output and you wire it up to a switch and then you press the button, it'll actually short circuit the output to ground and if the output was high that will cause too much current to flow through the output and it will probably destroy that particular output pin on the Raspberry Pi and may do further damage. So just be a little bit careful with this. Um, the other way around that, apart from, other than to restart the Raspberry Pi actually, is to run the program that I'm going to show you in a minute because part of that program will be setting that particular pin to be an input. So let's wire up the push switch. Uh, we need, you'll notice that the switch is kind of, there's a, there's a single um, empty square between the connections of the push switch. So I'm connecting this to row one and row three. Um, doesn't matter which way around, you then connect it to the Raspberry Pi, other than one pin needs to go to ground, like that, and the other pin needs to go to pin 18. Okay, and we're just using male to female headers to connect the two together, header leads. Okay, that's the wiring done. We'll now have a look at the software. So the software that we're going to use to test out this is in a program called switch.py, which is available with all the programs that can be downloaded uh, that accompany the book and the videos. So let's just run that program. And it looks like it's doing nothing. What's actually going on is that it's sitting there waiting to detect a, a push button press. So let's go back to the board and press the button and you should see that as soon as we press the button we get a little message on the screen that says button pressed. Let's just try that again a few times. There we go. See if you press the button really quickly we just get one message. If you press it and hold it down we get a whole sequence of button pressed uh, messages. Let's have a quick look at the code for that. So we can do nano switch.py and you can see that as usual we have to import rpi.gpio and we're also importing the time module and um, we do have our usual gpio.set mode to broadcom to use the broadcom convention for naming which pins we're going to use. This time in our gpio setup we're setting up pin 18 to be gpio.in and we then have this extra parameter here called pull up down equals gpio.pud underscore up and pud stands for pull up and down so pull up and down up. This is rather a complicated way of saying we want the default for the pin to be high to be up to be 3 volts which is why we connected the switch between ground and GPIO pin 18, so that when we press the switch, what it'll actually do is drop the, uh, the voltage on the switch down to zero volts. So let's have a look at where the message that said button pressed appears, why that appears. So our while loop will just continue forever or until we press control C, and we say um, input state, this is a variable we defined, is equal to GPIO.input on pin 18. So GPIO.input reads the value that's available on that particular GPIO pin uh, and it'll either be true or false. So we then say if input state is equal to false, 
Um, that actually means the button is pressed. It seems a bit counterintuitive, but remember when the button is pressed, it connects the GPIO pin to zero volts. And that, so that's why we do have the, expect the input state to be false if the, um, if the button is pressed. We then have this line here that does time.sleep 0.2. So what all that does is just pause for a fifth of a second. Because otherwise, if we just press the button, um, we get a whole stream of messages shooting past saying that the button is pressed. So this just kind of reduces the message count a bit. Okay, that's how you use a push switch with a Raspberry Pi.